Hi guys, my name is Faraday and welcome to the Insomnia Therapy Lectures. This is to help people to go to sleep, some of the drugs that's going to be very common in your practice and also in questions. No matter what you go into, a surgeon, you know, internal medicine, emergency medicine, you'll have patients, a lot of patients have uh, insomnia issues. So they'll be on some kind of a drug regimen and you need to understand this because then if they have issues, then you could address it. So what are our goals today? So we're going to know and learn about common benzodiazepine hypnotics. We're going to understand the mechanism of how those non-benzodiazepine hypnotics work. Then we're going to focus on this drug called Suvorexone, and we're going to understand the mechanism, the effects, and side effects of that drug. And finally, we'll focus on Romelteon and learn the mechanism, effects, and side effects of that. And then at the end, we're going to try to put it together and be able to differentiate these drugs compared to other addictive CNS depressants. So without further ado, let's get started. The first group of drugs we're going to focus on is non-benzodiazepine hypnotics. These are what you call the Z drugs is because they have, um, you know, they start with Z, like Zolpidem or Zeloplon, or they have a prominent Z in their name, like Esazoplicon, uh, you know, common name uh, you will see on, in the pharmacies is called Lunesta or the commercial that you might see. These are non-benzodiazepine drugs because unlike benzodiazepines, they work on a different type of receptor. The receptor is on the GABA receptor, but it's a BZ1 subtype. Do you recall where the benzodiazepines work? Well, if you said GABA A receptor, so the A subtype of the GABA receptor, you were correct. So they work on both, they work both on the GABA receptor, non-benzodiazepines, the Z drugs work on BZ1, and the benzos work on the A subtype. How does that work? Well, once you activate, you potentiate the GABA receptors by causing the frequency of the chloride channel opening, so to make those uh, by activating. So you a lot of chloride flows and uh, things go downstream. So let's focus on some of the highlights of these Z drugs. What makes them important and different compared to others? Well, the first thing I want you to keep in mind is they're metabolized by the liver and they're metabolized fast. That means they have a short duration of action. That is good because you want to help people get to sleep fast, but you don't want it to linger around. You don't want it to be, be somnolent and uh, be very sleepy for a very, very long time. That could get you in a lot of trouble. They have a decreased dependency risk. Now focus, they don't have a no dependency risk, but they have a decreased dependency risk compared to other drugs, such as a benzodiazepine. Benzodiazepines are very addictive and they have a high dependency risk. And that's important because in this country, United States, it's a very big problem with these uh, benzodiazepine dependents. And these patients are important to identify because uh, they can get in a lot of trouble if you overdose particularly. So keep those in mind. So if, if you suspect those patients, this, these drugs might be an alternative because they will help them sleep without the dependency risk. They have a minimal decrease in REM sleep versus benzodiazepines. Right? They sleep better because remember, REM sleep is the most important part of your sleep cycle. It's a deep sleep cycle. Benzodiazepines, even though they help you fall asleep, they decrease the deep sleep part so you don't get like that satisfactory sleep. But the Z drugs, they don't do that. So they don't affect your REM sleep. They're not amnestic. They don't make you forget things or you, you, know, you don't have... Uh, like that, that makes sense, right? You don't want to forget things. You're like, oh, did I take my drug or not? Then you take more and more and more so you can get in a lot of trouble. We also want you want to go to sleep and don't forget what happened last night or what happened in the morning. And you have a decreased day after effects. You don't have a hungover. You're not hungover the next day. You don't have all those symptoms. So keep those in mind. One important thing they likely test you on on the exams, even step one, two, and three uh, as you go along, is that these drugs are reversed by flumazenil. Do you guys recall what other CNS depressants that we uh, talked about in previous lectures are reversed by flumazenil? Well, if you said benzodiazepines, you would be correct. Let's put this together. Let's say you have a patient who has acute hepatitis and has a liver dysfunction, and then they take these drugs. You can't wake them up. Their oxygen saturation is going down, right? You suspect that they took this drug. How would you reverse it? You would give flumazenil. Now let's focus our attention on a new type of drug. That drug is called Suvorexin. You look at the red parts. Suvorexin is an orexin antagonist. Remember, orexin, you know, promotes wakefulness. 
right, of the arousal system. So subarexin, which is an orexin antagonist, uh, would block orexin. It decreases your wakefulness, right? So you get to sleep better. Another name for orexin is hypocretin. So if you see it on a question or when you read in the books, don't get confused. They're essentially the same names, all right? So what are these symptoms that you can get with subarexin? Well, obviously this is insomnia therapy, so they cause somnolence, so they're sleeping. But one of the other things is they start doing these uh, strange things during their sleep, like sleepwalking and stuff. So that's a very common thing to keep, with, uh, keep in mind with this drug. Some of the things that I want you to keep in mind are that it's a P450 metabolized drug. So you don't want to use this in liver disease or any of the drugs that have uh, decreased your P450s because then it'll hang around more and cause longer somnolence. And so keep that in mind. They like to always tie those in in your exam. But the most important things that I want you to focus on, and it'll likely tie in with your other lectures, is you don't want to use this in patients who have narcolepsy and narcoleptics, right? Why? So let's recall. These uh, patients with narcolepsy, they have the sudden loss of muscle function, what's called cataplexy, and they fall asleep like in the public, right? They like walking. You see this in like, you know, TV comedies, but it's a real thing. You know, you, they're walking around, and all of a sudden in the middle of like a train station or anything, they fall asleep, and you can't wake them up. Why does that happen? Those patients with narcolepsy have decreased uh, cells that make orexin, right? So remember, orexin promotes wakefulness, right? So that's why, because they don't have orexin, they don't have those promotions for wakefulness, so they tend to fall asleep really rapidly. You don't want to give a drug like suorexin, which is an orexin antagonist, to people who already have low orexin levels. And you're just going to exacerbate their symptoms. So keep that in mind. You don't want to give this to patients who have narcolepsy. Very high yield fact to remember. And the last drug we're going to talk about is Rameltion. Rameltion is a melatonin agonist and works similar to just endogenous melatonin. It binds the melatonin receptors, which are the MT1 and the MT2 receptors, which are located where? If you said the suprachiasmatic nucleus or SCN, you are correct. Remember how sleep cycle works, right? Just we're not going to dive into detail, but you know, sleep cycle is regulated by your circadian rhythm, which is driven by your suprachiasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus. And your circadian rhythm controls your nocturnal release of ACTH, prolactin, melatonin, norepinephrine, etc. And it's your suprachiasmatic nucleus is regulated by uh, environment, right? That's why you get sleepy when it's darker. There are a couple of side effects that you need to keep in mind for this drug is obviously for insomnia therapy is if you take too much, you're going to feel sleepy a lot more. You get dizzy and a little bit fatigued, but that's kind of expected with this drug that makes you sleepy. But the other ones they like to uh, ask you about is if you take a lot of the melatonin agonists, you'll get nausea, which is kind of very unique for this one. And you don't have dependency risk and uh, you can use people who you suspect have a lot of dependency issues. So it'll be a very safe drug. So before we go, let's focus on just a quick quiz. A 25-year-old male who presents to your office for evaluation. He states that he has been having episodes where he loses complete muscle tone and falls asleep in public. His peers can't wake him up. As his physician, you would like to promote better sleep hygiene for this patient, so he lessens episodes like this. But you start looking through the medication regimen and you know to help with the sleep regimen. Which insomnia medication in this patient would be absolutely contraindicated. Well, if you said subarexin, which is an orexin blocker, and these patients with narcolepsy have low orexin and you don't want to block that already, then you were correct. So keep that in mind. So what did we learn today? We learned that the Z drugs work on the GABA BZ1 receptor. We learned about subarexin and how it blocks orexin and its connection with narcolepsy. We learned about Romeltion, and it works on the MT1 and MT2 receptors in the suprachiasmatic nucleus and helps uh, with your circadian rhythm. And then all these drugs, compared to your other CNS depressants, such as benzodiazepines, have less addictive potential. But remember, it does not mean no addictive potential. All right. I hope you found this lecture useful. Please give a thumbs up below. I hope to see you guys soon.